almost every time. Let me know if you can hear me out there in YouTube world. Those of you who have been sitting and waiting, can you hear me now? Oh well. Hopefully they'll say something too. Hello everybody, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday, so Sunday, where I hope to inspire you to sew one day of the week. How about Sunday? <laughs> Notice I change that up almost every single time I'm here. Anyway, let's see who's here. Oh, happy 4th of July, which is tomorrow for those of you who will probably be here tomorrow too. <laughs> Um, let's see, we got Mary, Moldy Lasagna, LQ3, Kim, Diana, Melina, Donna, another Donna, wow, two Donnas in a row, um, another Donna, wow, today must be Donna Day, <laughs> uh, let's see, Paula, Judith, Oh my goodness, it totally jumped on me when that happened. Let's see, Christine is here. I'm just going to bring this close. Mona is here. Shelly, Linda. Oh, let's see, you guys have been talking for a while. Gwen, Irish Lady, Mary, Jill, Vicki. What'd you say? Oh, well, I missed that part. I just said Irish lady. Sounds good. <laughs> Carissa, Janice, Karen, Robin, Mary, Roxanne, Natalie, um, Katrina. I think that's what that says. And it skipped again. And I don't know where I was. So if I skipped you, I'm sorry. Where am I at? Marie. Robin, Jim is here, Zella, Gigi Quilt, Patty, it's not done, Kathy is here, Blaze is here, Sherry, Kat, uh, another Donna, today is Donna Day, I'm telling you, <laughs> Arena is here, Veronica, Agnes, Patty, Carolyn, Oh, I'm just going to stop because, you know, it keeps scrolling on me and I'm losing my spot. So hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, my goodness. It's really, really, really going full screen. So today is the day before the 4th of July. And what do I need to do? Well, I need to do something I've not done on my channel before, and that's make something 4th of July related or American related. Americana related, you know, like an American flag out of fabric. So that is what I'm going to do today. There's no real uh, direction for this. I'm just going to make some sawtooth stars and then I'm going to take red and white fabric and make 13 stripes. That's what I'm going to do today. <laughs> so not only do I have some red, white, and blue fat quarters here, that I grabbed from my fat quarter drawer, if you don't remember from my room tour. But I actually also have this tub right here of all my red, white, and blue scraps. Because I do use red, white, and blue, but the scraps always end up in here. You made patriotic placemats. Did I make patriotic placemats? I probably did then. But I've never made an American flag out of fabric. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I've probably made a lot of things and I don't remember because I make so much stuff. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. But before I get to that, I'm going to give some shout outs, to postcards and stuff. I would normally do this on mail openings, but I don't have any big mail. So I'm just going to put it here in this video. So I got a postcard that has, what were these again? Bobcat, Bobcat. kittens. Bobcat. So this one says, 
the, the person that sent this to me uh, is Laura. I'll just say it because, you know, she wrote on here, here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> so there is a postcard of some bobcats from Laura. And then this one is the uh, from Kansas. It is uh, the Oz movies. Uh, Dorothy, Wizard of Oz. There's the word I'm looking for. This one's from Gwen. So she sent me the Wizard of Oz, and the bottom says, there's no place like home. Well, there is no place like home, because at home is where I have all my fabric. <laughs> and then from Maine, Nubble Light. This is a uh, lighthouse that looks like it's on a really pretty little coastline area from Linda. So this is a scenic thing from Maine. Cape Netic Nubble Lighthouse is, is what they call it. And then I also got a card. That says hello. And this is from May. I think that says May or Mary. This says Mary. It says Mary. So it's a card that says hello with an old telephone, a rotary telephone. Yes, I know what they are because I had these as a kid. But did my kids know what they were? No. <laughs> no, they don't. Well, and nowadays kids have no clue, like literally. And I'm just reading the card real quick. And then had a little prayer of gratitude. Oh, Lord, you have given me so much. Please give me one thing more, a grateful heart. And there is the little card that was in the card. So there's that. So thank you guys who sent me postcards and a card. You guys all know that I love postcards. Uh, if you could see my wall here. It's overflown and I have no place for these. So I need to hang another string from side to side so that I can hang more postcards. <laughs> so there's that. Also, I, okay, I got a gift from my friend here locally. You guys want to see this cute gift? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> She said she saw it online and she thought of me and so she had to bring it to me. It's technically for traveling with your bras. We're all women here. Well, Jim, I know you're here too, but you know, we're all women here and we're all people that know that women wear bras. Well, except for me, but whatever. Anyway, this is the most adorable little thing. But she said she saw when she went somewhere that a lady was using one of these for... Ready for this one? Putting her supplies in, closing it up. And it was for traveling with her quilty supplies. <laughs> so it literally is like a little quilty supply travel bag in a funny, humorous way. And you guys all know that I will definitely be using this. So this came from one of my local friends and yeah. It's just the cutest little thing. It also kind of, like, the two sides feel like they would fit CDs in them. It's like two CD cases combined. So I bet you I could put a ton of CDs in here, too, if I had a working CD player. What you do in the car? I do in the car. <laughs> but I thought I should, I should show you guys this. It's cute. So I'm going to keep cool stuff in there. Anyways, that's all that. So it's going to sit behind me. So I got a bra on my shoulder. <laughs> it's funny. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some fat quarters and some blue fabric and start by making stars. And I did not wind bobbins. Oops. Oh, well, we'll just go with what I have and then wind when I need to. All right, so I'm going to start by cutting. Um, we'll use this as my center square. And this is just going off of memory. So I need 
to start with four and a half inch squares for the center. And I don't know how big this is going to be. We're just making things up as I go. And I want this fabric in the center. So I'm just going to line this up, cut a straight line, turn it around, and cut off a four and a half inch strip. And I should be able to get four or more squares. I don't know if I should do four or five and fill in the empty space with blue, but we'll see because I only need one for now of that color. These are going to be the center because it's kind of directional. And then at four and a half inch squares, I'm going to cut some two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. I guess I'll do four to start with. One. That way I can make all of them at the same time. Two. I'm hoping you guys are all enjoying your weekend. Last night, I was so glad that the sound of fireworks stopped last night at a decent hour because they've been going off all weekend. And let's just say it's kind of annoying when... They've been going off since Thursday. Yeah. When you start falling asleep at, say, 1130 and then you hear boom really loud, like I struggle with insomnia. So falling asleep has always been hard for me. And then I hear a boom. Obviously, I don't get to sleep as long as I wanted to. All right. So now we're going to do blue with this one. And I'm going to cut some two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. I'm just going to go ahead and like trim it right here. I'm pretty sure that's going to be as straight as I can get it. These are just fat quarters that I'm working with, by the way. Come on. All right. So we're going to cut two and a half inch. And I'm going to cut one, two, four of them. One. One for each block. Two, they're all going to be three, and, and I might change my mind how I'm doing it as I'm doing it. Four, place that out of the way, then we're going to stack them up and sub cut to four and a half inch. And then I'm just going to be snowballing the corners to create the flying geese because I think it'll be easier that way. Because I could have done the four at a time flying geese method, which I should have done for you guys, honestly. <laughs> that would have been the smart thing to do because I don't know if all of you know how to do four at a time flying geese. But I would have to have done some math first anyway, and I did not do that. Let's grab this little tiny guy. Yeah, I don't do math ahead of time. Nope, nope, don't do it. <laughs> All right, four and a half. So these are going to be what the star points go on. I want the whole entire background of my star to be all the blue fabrics. I know that sounds weird, but the star parts, just the legs are going to be the white. I think that'll be good. Three and four. And we're going to choose a different color to be the four corners. But I'm also going to choose this white and this white. I'm going to do two whites. Yeah. Okay. I still need my last blue for the corners as well. I'm going to do both of these at the same exact time. Just going to stack them up. Just like this. And I'm going to cut two and a half inch squares. 
squares. That's what I'm going to cut. I'm start right here, straighten that edge up, flop it around nice and carefully and cut some two and a half inch strips. I'm gonna cut two. So I think that's all I get 16 per regular strip and each two of these is like a full strip, uh, selvage to selvage. And I get 16, so that's eight per piece. And that's what I need. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, I need eight. So I'm just going to stack these up. I have no idea how long this is going to take me to do, but if I don't finish it today, I'm hoping that I can come on sometime tomorrow and work on it some more. Well, and I, I totally keep telling you guys, I don't need to start any more projects, but what do I keep doing <laughs> starting more projects? I've been trying to get some things long armed though, but not quite all the stuff I need. Yeah, we're going to a barbecue, so hopefully beforehand tomorrow I'll be able to come on and work a little bit. So I'm just cutting two and a half inch squares so that I can snowball the corners of my two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. And then I need one more blue. I should have just done the center's white, huh? I should have, but I didn't. We'll see what it looks like before I sew it together. If so, I'll turn them white with the American flag fabric. All right. So now I'm going to cut one. No, I get eight, so I need two. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I need two strips that are two and a half inches. Here, so I'm making four blocks to start. And two, throw that aside, stack this up, and these will be my four corners. Are you able to use any other thread besides glide on your green cube? Um, my Juki, yeah, I can use all sorts of thread. It just doesn't really like Aurifil. But guess what I'm using? Aurifil. So I'm going to have to deal with the thread breaks because I've been, I'm trying to use the spools up. So I'm just dealing with it. What are you using the long arm? On the long arm, I use Glide. Is it That's one really block. I can use other threads. It just takes a while to get the tension correct on them. It's two blocks. I'm just making up as I go by memory. And two more. All right, that goes up there. All right, so now I'm going to take all of the rectangles that are two and a half by four and a half and all of my two and a half inch squares over here to the sewing machine and I'm going to snowball every single corner. So I'm just going to start with one corner first and I'm just going to sew from corner to corner and I'll repeat the process over and over until all of these have a fabric on the end. Oops, I've got to change my stitch length. That was binding earlier. I'm actually using the seam tape on my machine. To help guide me from corner to corner so that I don't have to draw all these lines because that, my friends, is a no more thing for me. I don't draw on my fabric. I use the seam line from the tape on the machine, which I'm telling you has saved my sanity. Huh? I use a signature R fill. Uh, 
Coates, Mettler, uh, you name it, I can use it. I have a whole drawer filled with threads. I even have Missouri Sar thread, King Tut, um, like I said, Coates. Uh, what is this one? I've used this one a lot. Guterman, you know, I just, I use whatever I can get thread. I'm not picky about my thread, so. That was a weird sound. All right, so I'm just doing this first, and then we'll lay out some stars and see what they look like with the blue. And if they don't look good, then I'll just cut some white and see what it looks like. You never know until you sew it together what it's going to look like. So I got to do all this side first, trim away the excess, press it, and then do the opposite side. If I pay attention, I can get it done pretty quick. Or if I stay focused, I can get it done pretty quick. <laughs> And this is called chain piecing. For all of you newbies that don't know, this is when you don't break thread and you keep, if you have the same piece you gotta repeat over and over, you're chain piecing it through. If I free motion quilt on the Juki, I use Coates, Arfil, Guterman. I, I use everything at King Tut, the Juki. It breaks thread a lot with the R fill, so it's really hard to free motion quilt on here. But I don't free motion quilt on this anymore. Only if I absolutely have to. I don't even really quilt on this, except for like little tiny projects. Since I have a long arm, I use that. It saves me the headache of sitting here. Free motion quilting. All right, so since I'm going to be doing lots of chain piecing, I might as well bring out my little cutting gizmo. All right, then I'm going to trim away a quarter inch seam allowance on all of this. And then they're going to get pressed if you'll turn an iron on in a minute. Yeah. I use polyester on the long arm and polyester and cotton here at the sewing machine. Depends on what thread I put in here. I try to mainly use cotton in here, though. It's very messy. The juki gets so dirty, but... The long arm does too with cotton, but I mainly use polyester so that I don't have to worry about cleaning up the mess because the glide is pretty much mostly lintless. That's why I use it. It quilts beautifully. It's very shiny and shimmery, which I like, but they also have dull colors as well. And I just like how it quilts. Wrong way. Make sure you're doing it the right way, Tippy. Ready for me nine? Yeah, you can start pressing these white ones. Just back this way, like that. Towards, Towards the, the white. white, yes. That way. Yep. And later I'll go through and sew all these cutoffs together to go with my stack of uh, snowballed corners from two and a half inch squares and I'm making hourglasses for a whole entire second quilt from a bunch of quilts and pretty much mostly from my 25 patch blocks but I've been adding all this stuff to it as well because I'm going to need like probably a thousand little pieces for that because <laughs> I'm trying to make a big quilt out of all the scraps so that I use up more scraps because I'm all about using up scraps. All right, and while he's pressing, I'm going to start 
once he piles them over here, I'm going to start sewing on the opposite corner. So I sewed one corner on. Now I'm going to sew on the other one. So I'm going to start from the bottom corner and come up to the middle. This is just making flying geese units. There's many ways to do this, but this is the way I'm choosing today. I'm putting the matching color on the opposite side as well. So that way the star points match per one. I could have mixed it all up, but I'm making a match. Making it matchy matchy. Sewing the opposite side on. This way I'll have a quarter inch available at the top point when my star points are opened up like this. Come on, open it up. When it's opened up, I'll have a quarter inch here so that I don't lose my point of my flying geese unit. And if you're new to my channel, welcome for one. And for two, nothing I do is written down. I just kind of make stuff up as I go and tell you what I'm doing along the way. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Scott will see it and let me know what it is. And if we don't get to your question right away, just ask again because he's ironing right now, so he doesn't see everything when he's ironing. Well, you're going to be doing these after I'm done sewing the sides on. This guy, I'm putting him on here. This is probably the quickest way, I think to do flying geese units. Ways I said, like I said, to do it. The four at a time method is good though because it doesn't waste much like at all until you trim your block. But that one requires math and I did not come prepared for today's video. Of course, I don't come prepared to any video. I kind of just go. <laughs> I wing it. Every Sunday I look around my room and go, hmm, what can I do? Then I take a nap and I come back in here after nap and go, oh, I do. And then I always change my mind at the last minute. So literally the decisions are like last minute. All right. So I'm going to break these apart, trim off the excess, have Scott press them, and then the star legs will be done. So we could start seeing if the block is going to look good with the blue in the middle or if I'm going to have to cut some white, but we'll see. All right, so I'm going to trim away my excess. And I use a ruler for this. I know some people do it with, um, they trim it away with some scissors. Yeah, you can start ironing these towards the white as well. But I like to use the rotary cutter so that I have a nice consistent quarter inch seam on all of my blocks. I guess there's nothing wrong with that, right? <laughs> Did you see if the bot was working earlier? Yes. Oh, okay, good. All right, awesome. Uh, I wasn't planning on talking about that right now. Oh, it's for uh, my affiliates are now, if you type in explanation point SMP, that goes to Sewing Machines Plus, where you can find this Juki machine and the King Quilter and like my brother, um, PRS, 
Persona PRS 100 embroidery machine, all those kind of things. If you like what you see in my videos, that's where you can find all that stuff. And if you type in explanation um, CT, that's connecting threads. I am also affiliate with them. And explanation FQS is for that quarter shop, which is got everything. So if you need something quilty related, Fat Quarter Shop usually has it. And those links will take you straight to their site. Does not cost you to use them. It's just a little bit of help from my channel. And when I say little bit, I really mean that. <laughs> All right. Can you call your new bag a booby trap? I could a booby trap for all of my quilty stuff. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty that good. is funny. All right, let's see what a star looks like with the blue in the middle. Two, three, and four. And we'll put four of these in the corners and see. What do you think, Scott? Does it look good like that, or should I put white in the middle and have an all white star? I don't know. Can you guys see it? What are you making? Stars. And then I'm going to do stripes. Stars and stripes. Well, then if. Okay, so if you put white in the middle of the star, what are the points of it going to be? White. So it would be the whole star, star would be, would be white. white, like the American flag. I don't know. Can you guys see this? All right, let me. I'd have to see one of let me design board this for you guys i do have one i just never use it <laughs> and then i'll hold it up for you guys to see <laughs> because i definitely never pull this thing out one it's... person said i love it leave it no one else said anything okay another one says i like the blue in the middle another one says i love it all right let me hold it up like this so you guys could see on my lovely design board I like it as is no one's telling you to do the all white, so. Okay, let's do a white for comparison. I want this white right here. Yeah, that's what I said. You have to do white to compare. I yep, I let's can't cut a it. white to compare with. Give me two seconds to cut up some white. Come on. A lot of people are saying they like it the way it is. Okay. Well, we're going to see what it looks like with white real One quick. One says white would make it pop. There you go. There's some people saying white. Do not cut just like I did right now towards myself. <laughs> Don't do what I did. Like, at all. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> all right. Let's move that out of the way. One person says red. <laughs> Yeah, that would be completely red, white, and blue. All right, let's cut the salvage off. And let's cut four and a half inch square. All That's right. Dry. We're going to move no, this, do and I'm going to lay one with blue and one with white, just so that you guys can see, because I have enough pieces here to do both, just so you can have complete comparison. So block two is going to go just like a bit. Like that, like this, like that, and like this, that, and that, and white in the middle. All right. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know about this one, my friends. It's hard to tell. I don't know. All right. We're going to hold it this way so you can see. So far, I think the majority said the blue, but now that I get to see. Well, there they both are. I don't know. I kind of like it with the blue because the red and white, but I like it with the red and white now that I'm looking at it on the camera, too, because it has blue in it. My goodness. Hmm. That's, yeah, both look good. That's what I agree. I don't know. There are a lot of people are saying blue and white. You're getting a lot of both. So. We're going to do blue and white then. How about that? I'm going to cut one of these so that I have two blocks with this and two blocks with the blue. 
How about Game that? Blues winning. You get yeah. more blues, but you're we're gonna, get a lot of blues. We're going to do both. I'm going to cut all four of these. That way I can make some more blocks later. Move that out of the way. And now they're saying do some of both and mix it. So yeah, gonna... that's what I'm going to do. I've changed my... See what I do, guys? You guys help me change my mind. So easy. <laughs> so one, two. We're going to do this one and this one. So we're going to make the four. Do you have enough fabric to do it? What do you mean? Do you have enough white? Do you have enough blue? Do you have enough... Oh, yeah, I have plenty of fabric. Okay, well, that's what I was asking, too. If you, if you run out of fabric, that would be the definitive answer. Yeah. The no. one that has the most. Yep, no, I have plenty of fabric. All right, so now I'm just going to sew these together like nine patches. Let me put my seam guide on here. You know, I actually have a quarter inch foot. So I don't have to use the seam guide every time, but I still go back to my seam guide all the time and end up using it. Weird, right? I'm just going to sew all these together and make four blocks to start with and see what happens. And I'm making all of my blocks at the same exact time. Weird, right? That's how I'm going to roll today. Oops. Oh, that way. Last one. And we're going to do what's on this. I'm just going to lean it this way. chair is so squeaky. I think I need to oil it. It's like a sewing machine. You got to oil the chair too. Scott, can I have a cold water, please? I hope I didn't yell in you guys' ears. <laughs> no, just water. All right, so all that to go right back to the top again. I'm going to press out. I'm going to put this on one side. And I'm just going to keep these on my lap. And this one's going to go in. Put this on this side. And this one's going to go out. On the bottom. This out. This is the top. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because they're all the same pieces. <laughs> this is the middle. But I need to take a drink of water. like 103 out today it's not as hot as it has been it's very windy today hopefully it's not too windy tomorrow because that way i could see the fireworks show on the lake
from us to Vegas is about two hours. Depending on traffic. And if you get pulled over in searchlight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take it apart in sets of three. There's one block, two blocks, three, and this is the fourth block. I'm just going to finger press these and put them together, just like this. Look at how fast and easy that is when you chain piece your whole project. Four blocks made just like that. I'm just going to press that out. Come on. Press out. Thank you. Thank you. Put the opposite side on. I'm nesting my seam so that everything. Line. The blue star fabric on the legs. That you used on the legs for the flying geese. I could. So there's one. If Scotty will press that flat. Oh. All right. Let's lay this out. Finger press it first, nicely right sides together and everything's hooked so I can't lose how my blocks go which is the good part about chain piecing everything too is I can keep it all in order and not lose where my parts go or get them turned around or flipped. Just gonna finger press back. Damn. Love it. back and it's a Scott to flatten it out. Okay. Oh <laughs> I don't mind visitors. In fact I enjoy having company. Because it's where we get company, so obviously it's like, yay, <laughs> when someone comes to visit. <laughs> the white one done. All right, there is another white one. I like both ways. I didn't lose any of my star points either. I'm doing good today. Woo wee. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Usually when I rush during live streams, I tend to lose all of my points. <laughs> Like that Holiday. seam didn't line up, but I'm going to leave it. Right. And there I have it. I've made four blocks. Just like that. Here you go, Mr. Scotty, to make it flat. Move this out of the way. All right. Let's see how what this size is. is. The middle square. The middle square is four and a half inches. This is four and a half by two and a half with two and a half inch snowballed corners, and the squares in the corner are two and a half inches, which gives an eight and a half inch block. Yep. 
eight and a half inches. Yep, eight and a half inches. Let's make sure on this one. Eight and a half inches. Woot woot. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to put me stars together. And let's see. I'm going to build from that. That's kind of big. Maybe I should just make star block, stripe block, star block, stripe block. What do you think? No, because I want to make a flag. So I'm just going to have this as my flag part. All right, red and white time. I need. It doesn't have to look like a flag. You can just make a bunch of different blocks like this, put them together, and still be a patriotic quilt. No, I'm going to make a flag. Hmm? Hey, Tuck, where you been, kiddo? All right, let's cut some. Strips. I'm gonna do the bot my flags. I'm actually put these together so that I can make sure. No, I'm not gonna put them together. Yes, I am. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I'll need to go five more below that. I'm actually not gonna do squares in my red and white. I'm actually gonna do rectangles. So we need my white. No, my 25 patch blocks were, um, no, they're uh, 10 and a half inches. All right, we need red and red and that's more blue. This is red. This is red. This is white. here for now and I'm going to go to my bin and find some more red and white. Here's white right here. This is all scraps that I'm using. Use those. Oh, here's some white right here. Here is some white on white. I don't really want to use much white on white, but I do want red. I don't want solid reds. I want to use all the red like this, red like that. Those aren't two and a half, but this might be red. That reads red also. Let's not use that. I have way more red than I have white. You know, I literally have fabric in here for the 4th of July. It literally says the 4th on it. <laughs> I'm going to throw some of it in here. How about that? Oh, that's white. It's not white, white, but it's white enough. That's not a two and a half inch strip, is it? Oh, yeah. Perfect. All right, more white. This is Christmas. Christmas is in your patriotic box? Yeah, it's patriotic Santa Claus. Okay, then I'll go with it. <laughs> Patriotic Santa. Why not? Santa with American flag on, huh? All right. I think that's enough. Oh, there's one more red. Okay. Well, I'm not going to have much variation on my white side, but my red side I will. So we're going to mix this tone on tone in it. All right, here we go. Let's cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips from all this red and white. I'm just going to 
set that there for a minute. So I'm going to cut two and a half by four and a half inch pieces, not two and a half inch squares, which will make it different than most of the flags that people make out of red, white, and blues. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this. I'm going to cut some two and a half inch strips. So I'm going to with just a few whites. Technically, I could just leave them whole too, honestly, but we're going to piece it together kind of cool like. Four. And we'll cut five. We're going to make this fun. Let's make it fun. Okay. I'm going to open this up. Stack them up and I'm going to cut four and a half inch pieces. And then what I'm going to be doing is chain piecing everything. So that way I'm going to make 13 rows of strips and then the last five so um, six, no, 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 seven. what did I count? Eight, right? Yeah, eight of them will be shorter than the last five, if I'm counting correctly, but obviously I'm probably not. All right, cut the salvage off. Here we go. Let's cut a bunch of four and a half inch rectangles. Because I'm making mine. Like I said, I don't know how big this is going to be. Because, well, I didn't do any math. And then I do need some two and a half to start and end rows with. So I'm just going to pre-cut some two and a half inch pieces. Put those up there. We're going to cut some more of these. This could go with white. Two and a half inch strips. Three. Did I cut five of the other one? Or four? Did you add, yeah, I don't know. Oh, probably. Where's the stack? I'll count. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, come on. Stay. All right. And that can go in my scraps. Straighten them up. Going to town here, guys. Getting it done. So two and a half by four and a half here. One. Two. Three. Oh, yeah. I knew I was counting wrong. I need 13 stripes altogether. Yeah. Yes, I know that part. Starts with red. 
right? All right, and some two and a half starts and stops with. Oops, let's fold this back up. We're going to cut some off of here. So it's a good thing that I don't have as much white as I have red. Because that allows me to... Two... Three, four, and... ah, don't move, ruler. Five, all right. Gonna stack these up, cut them. We're going to hook a bunch of them together. So I have one, two. And get some of these in there. Just a couple. That doesn't read that much white. Some of these I'm probably going to put away because they don't read white to me. Just work with the fat quarters I pulled out. <laughs> <coughs> It'll work. It'll all work out. Four. Two and a half to end it. And anything that's left over will go in my two and a half inch bin or my two and a half by four and a half inch bin. I don't have really that bin, but you know, I can make one. All right. I'll save that white for a border or something, maybe. I don't know. We're going to see right now if I can just work with these. I don't think it'll look horrible. Because we're going to lay it out on the desk, sort of. How are you doing? I'm fine. I've been doing a lot of swimming lately, so it's keeping me well fit lately, which makes me feel good. I love to swim, if you guys didn't know that. I'm definitely a mermaid or a fish or a water baby, whatever you want to call me. That's what I am every summer. Saw that happening. Come on, right there. Getting stuck. All right. Four and a half. Four and a half. Awesome. Thank you. Four and a half. I've got to turn this one around because my little corner got a little wonky. There we go. Sometimes that happens when I'm cutting. I cut so much in a hurry that I get a little wonky. <laughs> I don't mean to, but it happens. All right. 
Now let's cut some red. I might want to, yeah, I like this one. I just need a little bit. Here. This is a full length strip, so sorry if you guys hear my son's car alarm. It likes to go off randomly. CJ, your alarm. One. Two. Three. I do enjoy my embroidery machine, although I haven't used my embroidery machine in like, um, I don't know, two weeks. <laughs> I've been so busy with jobs that I haven't had a chance to play with the embroidery machine. So. The last thing I did was I made a shirt. That was it. This one, doing the same thing, two and a half by four and a half inch pieces. All right, so I got to cut two and a half inch strips. And I needed more red than white. And like I said, anything that doesn't get used, we'll just go, I'm just gonna put that aside for now, in a different pile. Stack these up to subcut. This one. That one. Does anybody have plans for the fourth? You guys all gonna watch your city or town or wherever you live local type shows? Or do you plan on shooting off fireworks with friends and family? They're illegal here, but people still shoot off the ones in the sky. But I plan to go up on the roof and watch the big show because I can see it perfectly from up there. So if you didn't know, I do go on my roof for the hot air balloons and I go on my roof to watch the... 4th of July show because we don't like driving down there because it gets super crazy insane <laughs> with traffic. Drunk. Yeah, and half of them are drunk. So we just stay home since on our roof we have like an amazing view. Like if we had the, some people have this thing where it's above their garage or somewhere on their roof. Uh, what is it called? A lookout deck. It's like a lookout deck. A lot of people have those around here. If we had one up there, it'd be amazing because we could see the whole stretch of the lake. We have a pretty good view of the lake from our roof. I mean, we could have a lookout deck if we wanted and just build some walls up there around and a stairwell to get up, but I just call it the lookout roof. I just sit up there, it's no big deal. <laughs> Okay, let's cut 
this guy. Yeah, technically fireworks are illegal here also. We just have the big uh, local show. And most people get away with it, yeah. But they're not supposed to. If a cop is driving by, you, you'll get in trouble for it if they see you shooting off them. Yeah, it's, it's dry and it starts fires here and we don't want to fire. That's for sure. But the ground ones are legal. They have fireworks stands that sell the ground ones. All right, that one is short to here. That wasn't a whole entire piece. Like I'm just go up there with my scraps. Got some more strips right here. I'm just gonna put that up there. Fireworks are banned where? Oh, that sucks. Do they at least have shows that you can go see? In Australia, if it's banned. I definitely like to watch the fireworks, but there's a time and a place for them. <laughs> Literally. Anything more is too boom boom and annoying. But they are beautiful to watch. All right, let's pull some off this. I might need to cut more of that other red. Three. Oh no, I still have this one left. I'll sub cut all these all in a minute. I'm just cutting from all this first. Mixing Wilmington prints, connecting threads, moda. I'm I'm mixing everything in this quilt. This is going to go in my random strip drawer because that's not going to get the right amount. It's way off. Get one and a quarter off of that. Just going to put this cut real quick in my random width drawer. Right there. Okay. That should be enough different reds, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I'm not going to bother with this, that, or any of this. I think I'm just going to skip it. Although this, I think, would go good with the whites. What do you think? Add this to the whites? No? Yeah, why 
not? I don't want to add the white on white. I'm changing my mind on things. I do that all the time, guys. Last you minute. The white star, the, the white with the red stars that you just put over there? No. White with the red stars. This one? No. Why not? Because I don't really. Okay. I don't like this one with it either. Okay. I'm not going to use this one I either. I like that white with the red stars over there, but that's on you. That's all there is of it, though. We'll add a couple pieces. I don't like this one. All right, let me pull the last of it. There's a couple little pieces. Let's see what I can get from it. Two and a half. I will get a few pieces. And that go up there. Turn. Turn. Let's cut the yuck off. And. that to it. Turn this into a two and a half inch strip. We will get some mixture in here. Stops right here because it wasn't an even cut. <laughs> All right. And then all I have to do is cut all that red up. And then I can start sewing it all. That was a lot of cutting. Get as many pieces as I can from it. <laughs> oh look, we can get a two and a half inch square from it. This is about how I cut my scraps too, guys. I get all I can from the cuts. Is that even a five inch square? Is that what that was? Let's see. Nope, they're different sizes. Oh, that's even smaller. Oh, wow, that was pushing it. <laughs> Let me cut an equal amount from both sides. Four and a half and four and a half. There we go. Now to chop all this other stuff up. Here it goes. It's a lot of cutting, guys. I'm, I'm telling you. Lots of cutting. But I'm getting there. So we're going to just do two and a half inch squares. They weren't pressed first, so they're kind of a wrinkly. We didn't press all the fat quarters first. Red pile. And one more. 
not one more. These are already stacked, so I'm going to go ahead and do these. Now I'm going to stand because my legs are going to go numb sitting there. And if you could see my leg, don't mind the big, huge bruise on it. I was trying to teach a dog how to swim. <laughs> Seriously, it's all from teaching a dog how to swim. It's horrible. She got me good. No, I, I wasn't teaching her how to swim, really. I, was, I took a German Shepherd in the pool that doesn't know how to swim, and she doesn't move her hind legs. So she kept trying to lay down on me in the pool, which was very weird, and she ended up nicking me really bad and scratched me up, and I bruised from it because I bruise easily. All right, I got some two-and-a-half-inch squares. All these four and a half inches. All right. Shouldn't take me too much longer. I can start sewing all this. Feels like I've been cutting forever. <laughs> My legs are like falling asleep on me. You want me to cut some? No, I'm okay. I got it. It's very easy for me to do, and I'm quick about it, so. Hi, Becca. If you guys don't know, my friends there, they have blue wrenches. Those are my moderators, and some of them have their own YouTube channels, like Tucker and Becca. You can just type in explanation and their name. Tucker or Becca or if Beth is here. I don't know who else is here. But if you just type an explanation and then a name, it should give you a link to their channel. Even my friend Ian comes on here sometimes. He has a channel link. And Teresa Louise is here. And she has her own. That's just explanation. Teresa. Oh. Yeah, I didn't even see her on a live stream earlier. But they could be camping because it's 4th of July. They tend to do those kind of things. All right, I'm going to try to do all of these, like, literally at the same time. I'm just going to use my bigger ruler. Almost seven years now. It'll be seven the end of the summer. Because I started in the winter and I was super like, why am I in the garage? As soon as it became summer, I was like, Scott, I'm going to go sew in my bedroom. Actually, I started on the kitchen table, then I went to my bedroom. Yeah. Yep. You know those memories that pop up on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, that's how I know. Because I see the memories on Facebook. <laughs> From when I used to post quilts all the time and annoy all the family members. <laughs> because all my posts were quilting related. All right. All right, so I'm going to cut all of these at the same time, all of my four and a half by two and a half inch pieces. Look at that. See how much easier it is to just stack everything? It does not help that none of this is pressed, but we're just going to make it work because I really uh, don't want to lay flat right here. And I hate to skip it because I want to use it every last bit of it. Stay, stay. This one got moved. There we go, right there. Right there, right there. Stay. Don't move. Don't move. Bam. See? Well, I can get it done. How long? What? A year and a half, two years? In where? Oh, yeah. all of my stuff has been in the house for two long years. Arm. The long arm's only been in the house for two years. Yeah, we t we moved it in in 2020. Yeah. yeah. The long the arm's only. Arm yeah. The long arm's been in the house for two two of those years. And I've had the long arm for four years now. Because it was in the garage for two years when I first got it. And then I had a the Juki on a frame for the first two years before that. 
that's a total of six years with uh, mid-arm, long-arm machines. Because I started doing the, you know, quilting on a frame in the beginning, about a year in. All right, all of my red and all of my white, everything is all chopped up. I'm missing, oh no, I'm not missing a white. All right, so we're gonna make a row. I gotta see how long this is gonna be real quick, guys. I'm gonna put all this up here. All of my starters, enders. Put all the whites up here too. Reds. I'm gonna try to be see how long one row can be. All right. So if this is up here, I know you guys can't see right here, can they? Sort of, huh? Uh, a little, yeah. Okay. So if these are up here in you the corner, the no, it's fine. I want to be able to go over starts with red so I'm thinking one oh, let's move that up like that move that up like that we're gonna see how far I'm gonna go real quick two three four five and six. So it's going to go six. No, I should go eight because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the length. Yeah. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to go seven and eight. Yeah. Eight long. And then nine, 10, 11, 12. It'll be 12 long for the ones that are below. Okay. So let's just remember that. Yep, yep, that's what I'm going to do. 8 and 12, 8 and 12. And they're going to be alternated as well because I have to be able to rotate the color so that it's not the same in every column. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. So this row is going to end with a two and a half inch square, right? It's going to end with a two and a half inch square. And then the white will be starting with a two and a half inch square. And so on and so forth. So I'm going to go like this. I know you guys can't even see what I'm even talking about right now. But I will chain piece more after this. I'm just getting the general idea on length real quick. Because now i got to get the idea of all the seam allowances taken. I'm just going to press them all in one direction. It really doesn't matter the order, honestly. I could probably just, as long as no two same ones are touching, I can just put them in whatever order. My two and a half to end it. All right, let's see how long one column row is. That seems good, right, Scott? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Why don't I move the camera so I can't see any of that? Oh, well, you could tip it down, I guess, because I'm going to start sewing these. Am I going to be ironing this one? Uh, you don't have to iron them right now. We can iron them all at the end. Okay. Let me move the camera down so they can see all of you. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them. We're going to start out with a small. We're going to go one, 
two, so. three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm just going to go like this. This okay. one to this one. I don't care. Just. Okay, I'm back up now so I can see those. Yeah. They got the general idea of what I'm doing. You can only see the, the from here down. <laughs> oh, that's fine. So I'm going to chain piece all of these in sets of two. And then I'll hook the twos into fours. They can see from here now. Put this one on here. And then we're going to snip these apart. And then this goes. It doesn't matter which way I press the seams because everything is not going to match up. And let me thread broke. Come on. So I'm just pressing everything in one direction or the other. It really doesn't matter. And I don't I don't think I'm gonna care the order because it's You guys want Scott to have the camera move next to me so you can watch me so or are you fine with it where it's sitting? It really doesn't matter to me. All right, so this row I'm going to hook to this red row. They should be exactly the same size. And again, none of the seams are going to match and I didn't press anything yet, but I'm j I just finger pressed everything one way or the other. Just hooking them together. So they should be exactly the same size. From one end to the other with no nesting seams. Oh, you don't have the iron on? Whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, it's ready for this set okay. row to be hooked together. Where can you the box? Are you on the floor? Are you done with it? Um, yeah. Yep. put all this stuff somewhere so I can't find it. Okay, so. The first two rows look like this, and I'm going to make four of these sections to go, once I hook four of those sections together, they can't, they can't even see, you're way up high. Then I'll hook the two stars together for that top row, and then I'll have one whole top row complete. So we're going to go red again. So red this time starts with a big one. So I'm just going to start hooking them together it don't really matter what order i'm just gonna i need eight of them one two three four five six seven eight and a small one it doesn't matter which small one just a small one So I guess I don't really have to care about the order. I was going to alternate them, but I think it'll be fine just how I'm doing it.
So I'm just finger pressing, pressing them from one side to another, doesn't matter which. Oh, I don't want the same two on the end. Nope, I don't want that. All right. One, two. Okay, can you make this whole thing flat so I can hook it to that? Yeah. While I make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a little one. All right. So again, I'm just going to put them together. No particular order. As long as no two same ones are next to each other, I guess. That's all that matters. Because the white doesn't touch white when I go to put them together, so I guess it's okay. This part should go together pretty quick, though. This is so fun. So fun. Just throwing squares or rectangles, I should say, together. <laughs> no particular order. Just having fun with it, creating my red and white stripe. All right. So give me that other row, the red one. This one? Yep. Hook these two together. Again, I'm going to hook the short one to the long one. So the two and a half to the four, one end and a four and a half of the other. Line up this end. Uh, keep my seams the way I press them and then we'll have Scott press this towards the red so I'll finger press it for now so that way it lays just a little bit better before he starts pressing it so that I can hook these two to the other two and then we'll make one row all right there's that so those two are going to go to those two, but for now I'm going to take two of my stars and I'm going to hook them together. I'm also going to nest my seams. Like that. It doesn't matter which side I press it to, as long as it's flat. I'm also going to hook these two together because I can make my other rows. So this quilt is being made in rows. All right, 
So it starts with red, then goes white, then red, then white. So now I'm going to take these two rows that are like this, right sides together, and sew them together, and then we're going to hook them on to our two stars that we just hooked together. What? No, you're going to iron in two seconds. This is the part that goes super quick for me. Eight and a half inches. So this should be eight and a half inches as well. So again, I'm going to press towards the red because I don't really want it to show behind the white because red is pretty dark. And look at those almost landed in the same spots, but I'm not going to care. I'm just going to leave it. I knew that was going to happen sooner or later. All right, so now I'm going to go with, I'm on red again. So we're going to make eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And a little guy, we'll do this one this time. No, we'll do this one. I gotta just try to mix them up a little. I think it'll still good look good with my minimal amount of colors. I meant minimal prints, different prints. They're beautiful. All right, finger press, finger press, finger press. Talking to myself, guys. <laughs> I tend to do that quite often when I'm overly concentrating here. All right, so there is a row of reds. We're going to do four more, but first, before we do that, we're going to take this, should be eight and a half inches, so we're going to grab two of these. And it should be the same exact size, so I'm going to put them right sides together. <clears throat> Just like this. And then... Line it up and so And on. So one of these is going to get pressed towards the stars and one is going to get pressed towards the stripes. So a row should look like this. So this is how long the quilt is going to be. Now let's get its width by the time I'm done sewing all those pieces. So I just I need to make... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Five go below. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna They'll have twelve in the row. I, okay. I didn't yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one of these. You know what you're doing better than I do. I don't yep, know what I know what I'm doing. 
So each of the four, uh, eight, each of the eight top rows have eight four and a half by two and a half inch rectangles and one two and a half inch square in each of them. And then the five that'll be below on the bottom will have 12 rectangles and um, five, you know, 12 rectangles per row and one two and a half inch rectangle per. So it'll equal out. No, I'm going to put them together and then you can iron. So I'm just like putting them together without ironing. <laughs> I think I'm going to start because I have a lot of rows to do. All right. So again, this red one. So here's my two and a halfs on the end. I'm just going to swap it out and right sides together with one end being two and a half and one end being the four and a half inch square or rectangle on the edge. That way they're all um, opposites, like brick. It's like brick. The ends they should be exact if you cut all your pieces exact. And then I'll finger press towards the red. gonna set that aside right there we're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight and this one So I only need one more of a red, the red with white with the, that, and then I'll need to do five rows of 12. I should be able to have this whole thing done then today and I can do something else tomorrow. Oh, really? you gonna finish this tonight? Yeah, it should be done. Oh, then it should not be done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oops. Oh, I don't. That's fine. My butt is getting tired from sitting here. I'm telling you, my eye. I have a bony butt. Remember, I'm like tiny, skinny. So I really, after a while of sitting on this bony thing, it starts to hurt. And it's quite annoying. The hip pain gets worse. <laughs> when I tell you guys I'm only in here a few days a week, I literally am only in here a few days a week. And I only sew for like an hour, maybe two at the most at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, okay. I did have eight. <laughs> Put one of these on. Okay, I have to undo that stitch because I was trying to be cool and do one-handed, but um, <laughs> it kind of just like became a half an inch seam allowance. <laughs> it went up over the seam thing, <laughs> the seam guide. Well, that was kind of funny. I was all trying to be cool in one hand, so. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, look, that's better. One here. Once these four are together, I'll show you the hooking of them together and then sewing them to the stars. And then those two rows can get sewn together. And then all I'll have left is two piece five rows of 12 plus. Um, a two and a half inch square to each of those five rows of its color. All right, so I'm going to press this towards the red. Well, I think I, if I had a little bit of cushion, it would probably help my pain. All right, so now I'm going to hook these two together. So I'm going to make sure that red and white are white, red, white, you know, red, white, red, white. And I'm going to make sure since I didn't iron anything yet, I'm just going to make sure that the seams are not folding under opposite of each other. So that way it lays nice and flat. But first we need to find a bobbin. Yep, I didn't roll any, so I don't have one. Need an empty one. I did not pre-roll bobbins, guys, so I'm got to stop and do that real quick. Just takes a second to do this. And I have so much lint up in there. Hoo wee But I'm going to leave it. I'll take care of that later. 
<laughs> just want to finish sewing this real quick. I need my little birdie so I can thread my machine. All right, where did I run out? Right there. Line the two ends up. I'm going to press towards the red. Oops, that's towards the white. I put it this way, then it'll be towards the red. <laughs> and then the whole unit needs to be pressed real quick. And then we're going to attach it to the other two stars. Is the iron on? Because oh, I kind of need it on. I know. Uh, no, this needs to be ironed before I sew it to the stars. Because. Almost. All right. So this one will be red up here. So red goes to the top like this. Here's my pieces. They're going to go on here like this. I'm going to flip it upside down, sew them on, and then we're going to hook the two together, and then the rest I will do tomorrow. Where did I, where did I press that one? So this one goes towards the this direction. So we're going to take row one and row two and put them together. One, row two. So they should be exactly the same. I'm going to put them Five rows. All right. So I'm nesting the seams of the stars, but everything else won't have to nest or match. Only the stars. Everything else should flow nicely. And the end should meet right up. I'm going to press this towards the red. No. All right, there it is. So tomorrow I will come back and be making five more stripes. So this is the top right here. 
I'm waiting for my screen to show that I'm in the screen because it's so far behind. So there's that. So I just need to go red, white, red, white, red, and then it'll be done. And those rows are going to have 12. So we did eight here, but you got to think there's nine, 10, 11, 12. If you add the four that will come from here, plus each row will always start or end with a square, a two and a half inch square. So there that is. So tomorrow we'll come back. I'm just going to leave all this out right here and we'll make five more rows of pieces. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Say hi. Yep. He's saying hi, everybody. All right. So there that is for now. We're just going to lay it right here so I don't forget the direction it goes in. And then all of my little pieces get moved out of the way so that I don't knock into them and make a disaster, which I've already done in here. All right, then we'll just go back up like that. All right, so that is what I'm doing, my American flag quilt. I think it's going to look amazing. I'm so excited. And then I'll probably just have to, you know, quilt it with wavy lines across it and stars. Wavy line, add a star. Wavy line, add a star or something, you know, just so that it'll be fun. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. And again, I'm going to come back tomorrow. I don't know the time tomorrow because I'm going to a barbecue and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But I will come back. I'm just going to leave everything right where it is and sew my five more rows and then sew those five rows to this. And um, I would load it on the long arm and quilt it, but I kind of can't because because usually that's what I would do stuff like this. But I won't be able to because the long arm has a client quilt on it. So kind of can't do anything about anything at this moment. <laughs> but at least I got somewhere today. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a friends, barbecues, whatever it is you're doing. And don't forget to sneak in some sewing. <laughs> so see you guys. Bye. Oh, like, like this video. Subscribe. Share with your friends. How about it? <laughs> Good night, everybody.